Hey there, it's Jamie here, and today we're going to work on some time series forecasting. We're going to start by plotting a time series and getting a sense of how we properly format or clearly format the charts. Whenever you're working with time series forecasting, the first thing you do is plot the data. And the reason for this is because the choice of forecasting method is going to depend on what you see in the data that you plot. All right, let's start. Here I've got some data on houses sold, um, this number's in thousands, and I've got monthly data from January 2010 all the way to February of 2018. So first step is to plot the data, and to do that I'm going to highlight the data including the headings month and houses sold. Then under the insert tab, I'm going to try recommended charts first. That tends to be a good place to start. And I'm going to pick this first one that just says houses sold. And here we can see right away that there's an increasing pattern in the data. The data has increased, the number of houses sold have, have increased between January of 2010 and February of 2018. So this chart needs a little bit of attention. In fact, the things that I think need to change first is that the title, we can call it Houses Sold. If we want to leave it at that, that's fine. But we certainly need to label this axis. It needs to say monthly house sales in thousands. And we need to adjust this axis so that it's clear when the data ends and when the data begins. So let me show you how to do that. The first thing I'm going to start with is perhaps the trickiest, which is changing the formatting of this axis. When you have dates in Excel, it's a little bit trickier. One thing to know is that each date in Excel is stored as a five digit number. So to adjust this axis, we have to find the five digit number associated with the first and last date in our series. So I'm going to calculate the minimum and the maximum in our series using the min and max functions. So equals min, highlight the dates, press enter. January 10th, we already knew that, don't worry. Equals max, highlight the dates. Great, February 2018, we knew that. We have to change the format. We're going to change them from date to general. And when we choose general, it gives us the five digit number that's associated with January 2010 and the five digit number that's associated with February 2018. Now we're going to change this axis. I'll click anywhere on the axis and then I'll right click. I'll choose format axis and a box is going to come up to the right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to adjust the bounds, the first and last value. The first value is that minimum value of 40,179. The maximum value is that higher value corresponding to February 2018, which is 43,132. Then I'm taking a look here and we have these erratically spaced values. In fact, they're 500 days apart. And I'd like to get about two per year. So I'm gonna switch this to half of 365, which is 182.5. Great, now I've got values roughly every six months. This will get crowded if we change the shape or dimensions of our graph. So I'm going to choose to orient them in a way that it will be visible no matter what we decide to do with that graph. And to find that, I look under text options and then in this text box. Here I've got choices about vertical alignment, text direction, custom angle. I'm just going to choose to rotate all text 270 degrees.
Maybe it's thinking. Maybe it's not. I'm going to just try that again because I know from experience that it works. There we go. See, I knew it worked. The way my graph has showed up is that not all of the, of the values are visible. So if I click in, in the plot area, I get a highlight around the plot area. If I adjust this up, now I've got room for my dates. All right. Last thing I'm going to do is add some axis labels. Chart element, axis title, primary vertical. Make room for it. And I'm going to call this axis monthly house sales in millions. Sorry, in thousands. And then I will adjust this space so that it fills the chart. Great. That is how you format a time series chart in Excel. And why are we doing this? Sorry, last piece here is that we can see the upward trend in the data. So that's going to let us know, and we'll see in the examples that we use, that we need a forecasting method that accounts for trends, which is going to be probably exponential smoothing using Holtz model or a linear regression forecast is what's going to give us the best result. But I will show you um, on this data, moving average, simple exponential smoothing, and those other two methods. All right. Hope this helped. Talk to you soon.